Knowledge is power. Make an impact by learning more. Call us right now for more help at 866-945-8070. Hello. Hold on, this is Camille. Good morning. I'm trying to figure out how to turn my little thing around. Wait a minute. Hmm. A little camera thing here. We got a lot of people to let in here today. Ah, we can have the camera hooked up. Let me show you my face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Good, morning, Good morning, everybody. I want to say I had a ton of fun last week with Ada. Awesome. That's good to hear. (laughs) Ada's great. Yep. I'm even going to bring her um, October 20th. She's going to come to uh, Small Business Accounting Associates. We're going to do it again. Oh, beautiful. Very, very good. Yeah, she's great. I was introduced to her by a mutual acquaintance and uh, brought her on, as you probably remember, a while back, and she was wonderful then. I love her energy. Yeah. She gets so excited. Yeah, she reminds <laughs> me of me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, Gina, you are from Pennsylvania. I just found that out. Oh, yes. Yes, Gita. Yes. I think we're from the same area. You're northeast? Yeah. How about you? Where are you exactly? Um, in between Philadelphia and Lancaster. Oh, wow. Okay. We should get together sometime. Do you come down Bucks County? Um, occasionally, yes. Give me a call. Absolutely, it'll be fun. Yeah, it's, it will be. <laughs> I'll be right back. We're gonna give it another minute or two for people to join in. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, this is your first time joining us, I think, isn't it? Yes. Well, initially when you started, I started hanging out with on Google. Oh, you then, did? Okay. Yeah. And then I just uh, lost track of everything, you know. That was, yeah, that was a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. That is pouring his coffee. No, I'm actually pouring my, my soda, my uh, LaCroix, LaCroix, lemon. This is like the best. It's zero calories, zero sugar, zero anything, but it actually tastes good. Nice. But I do have, I do have my coffee, my French press right here. That's for cup number two. We're working on cup number one. Is that Lacroix? Is that mineral water like Perrier? No, it's um, it's just lemons flavored, natural lemon flavored sparkling water. They have a lot of different flavors. I've just found lemon is the best. Well, I like lemon the best. I know that Perrier has green apple. That's pretty good. Yeah, I drink the Perrier lemon. I guess I have a thing for lemon. Mm. Hey, Jan. Laura is in the chat. She says, nice turnout. Yes, it is a nice turnout. That may be thanks in part to our our friend Allison followed him to it. He sent an email out to all the QuickBooks Connect speakers, letting them know about this week's topic. (laughs) So we'll do another minute. Well, yeah, um, we'll give it another minute or two and then I'll get started because I actually have a lot of ground to cover and only an hour to cover it in. Good morning. Jan is representing Good morning. Expensify today. Yep. <laughs> you have a, um, <clears throat> a webinar after this one, Jan? We do. We do. Um, 
Christy Monahan is going to talk about inexpensive apps to help everyone get mobile. Well, she did awesome. it at the show. Nice. Yeah, yeah, that's she said yeah. she'd mentioned yesterday mm -hmm. online that it's the same presentation essentially that she gave at Seattle Accounting Tech, which was great. So Yeah, yep. I'm excited. I think it's gonna be a great one. Yep, especially the part where she mentions me. <laughs> <laughs> of course. I kid, I kid. <clears throat> All right, so I am gonna just straighten up a few things here and then we'll get started. I, uh, when we did the first speaker kickoff meeting, I had mentioned that I wanted to do something like this because, um, well, I had mentioned something about some of the things that I like to do because, uh, uh, let's, let's be blunt, you know, these, these conferences don't pay that well, right? So you want to find ways to, uh, you know, extend the benefits, let's just call it, right? And make it pay off as much as you can without, you know, without doing the wrong thing, which is, you know, we all know you can't sell during these things, right? But there are ways to make it pay off in the long run. And so that's what I kind of wanted to walk through today. And just as we get started, and I'm going to share my screen, of course, it wouldn't be a zoom in with Seth if I didn't. And today I'm actually going to remember to share it. Um, but first I have to let Mariette Martinez in. All right, so I have, uh, you know, drinking my own Kool-Aid, as you're going to find out over the next hour, I have for today a detailed write-up that will be available when the, today's recording goes up on my website, which will be tomorrow, you'll be able to click a link to download my, I call it the lesson plan, right, which is basically just <coughs> everything I'm going to be going over today. And, <coughs> excuse me, ordinarily, I would... Uh, have tabs open ready for what I want to show you, but part of what I want to show you is how quickly you can get to things the way I've got them set up. And as you can see, it starts with doing the write-up and doing it in a cloud-based document format like Google Docs, right? Notice it's not in Microsoft Word, it's in Google Docs, and you're gonna see throughout the hour why that's actually extra important, I believe, in a case like this. And what it really comes down to is the ability to link to this document or whichever document I might be working on from pretty much anywhere. Gina, that looks amazing. Everybody look at Gina's picture. <laughs> um, so you're gonna see as I go through today's outline, and for those of you who aren't accustomed to joining us, there, there will be many ADD moments like that, where um, somebody does something on camera that catches my attention and I direct all of your attention to it. Um, so I'm gonna power through the first part of this pretty quickly because I want to get to the stuff that I think you all really want to see, which is gonna be the WordPress stuff and you know that part. But there's some stuff I felt I needed to get through and I, like I said, I'll power through it quickly because I, I want to get to the good stuff, but this stuff is important. Most importantly, just know that you'll have it in your notes that you'll be able to download tomorrow. So, so if I'm moving pretty quickly at the beginning, you know, feel free to stop me at any point and slow me down. Um, those of you who know me also know that I'm not kidding when I say I could probably speak for the entire hour in a single breath. So if you need to, feel free to interrupt me. I won't be offended. Um, and ask your questions along the way because uh, I'd love to get them because that tells me that you're engaged. It tells me that you're actually participating in this. And, and that kind of brings up really the first uh, – point I want to make today, but before you get into that, just three quick learning objectives. One, we're going to learn how to engage our audience. Two, we're going to learn how and what to prepare before the day of the presentation. And three, we're going to learn how to use WordPress and a few other apps along the way to increase the payoff down the road, you know, to basically create a platform in which you get the opportunity to follow up with your audience. <clears throat> a few things you'll need, materials, things you'll need to uh, put on your list of things to bring with you. Uh, a positive attitude, a sincere desire to help others. Uh, MailChimp, we're going to talk about, or an equivalent product. Some of you might be using Constant Contact or something along those lines. Um, and a, uh, where are we? A WordPress website, if possible. Uh, a project management app. I'm going to show you the one that I use for this kind of thing. And, of course, Evernote. And Gina wants me to talk about how to handle interruptions. And the answer to that is handle them with grace. <laughs> But no, it's, you know, it's one thing actually now that you mentioned it, and all kidding aside, you really want to think about that. Do you, there's two ways to go about 
handling questions when you're giving a presentation, right? Do you want people to interrupt you and stop you along the way? Or would you rather they hold their questions to the end? The risk you run in suggesting that they hold their questions to the end is that you run out of time and nobody gets to ask their questions and then people walk away. Well, some people will walk away perhaps upset that they didn't get to ask their questions. That's one of the reasons I prefer to have people interrupt me and encourage that. Plus, the engagement that comes from people interrupting and asking questions often drives the content to perhaps a better place than I would have taken it without those interruptions. So that's one of the reasons I welcome them. Um, only once in my whole career have I ever had people get upset because they felt I was stopping too much to answer questions rather than focusing on what was sort of outlined for that day's content. And I felt it was better to answer questions. I felt that meant this is what people really wanted to learn about, and so that's what they got. But this is a, a CPA Academy webinar I did a while back, and a bunch of people had complained in their comments and said that I needed more experience. <laughs> hey, Seth? Yes, ma'am. Hey, this is Mariette. So I wanted to just give some input on that. Um, so what I've done, and I think it really depends on the content, and it's funny you brought up CPA Academy. So I think it's really important that you know your audience before. Of course, that's I'm sure it's something you're going to talk about. But if you know your audience and it's audience that definitely are content driven, like they really want you to get through the stuff, they're there for that reason. Let's say you're going to be giving CE or CPE, and so they really are there for that reason then a lot of times they would prefer that you have a designated Q&A session um, and get through what you need to get through because they're there for that reason. Now, if it's more of like a fire chat, you know, fireside chat, or they're really more into being interactive and conversational, then you can say up front, okay, we're going to do this. We're gonna, you're gonna, it's going to be a very interactive event. We're going to be talking. It's really good, and I've learned to just like put it out on the table because that way those haters – could be haters all they want, but you made sure to be very transparent from the beginning what that actual experience was going to be like. Um, I think the biggest thing I've learned with speaking is that when you don't explain what it's going to be like from the beginning, that's when they're like, well, you should have told us that. If that's what it was going to be like, you should have told us that. And so now I just explain what it's going to be like from the beginning. And then if they don't like it, then they can leave. I mean, sure. that's, just, that's just the way it's going to be. Sure. And there's a there's an important balance there. If you're going to take my approach, which again is to have it open to people asking questions throughout, you also want to be very aware of when the question that's being asked is something that's going to be covered later. A lot of times people will jump in because they're anxious and they're asking questions that get you ahead of yourself, which comes back to one of the other points I'm going to be making this morning, which, obvi which is obvious. I mean, at the beginning, I'm going to cover some of the very obvious stuff, but sometimes it's the obvious stuff that, that almost needs the most covering, if you will. <clears throat> and that is that you have to know your content really well. So that if somebody asks a question and you know that that's something that's covered later on, you have to be prepared to say, we're going to get to that, right? So that you don't let the questions get you too far sidetracked if you're not going to allow it. Because one of the concerns I have in doing the dedicated Q&A session, besides the fact that you can run out of time, is that the person may have the question and it may go very well hand in hand in context with what you're talking about at that moment. So that if you wait till the end, then the context gets lost and the value of the answer to the question may not be as potent. So again, like Marriott said, it's important to know your audience and understand and lay it out right up front. And I think in the end, you have to decide, if, you know, it's a style thing. You have to decide what, how you want to manage it. You're the speaker, you're giving the presentation. Um, and then manage accordingly so that you make sure that you don't get too far off track. If somebody asks a question that gets us way off topic, you've got to keep it on topic and just, you know, at a certain point, set the boundaries and say, you know, that's, it's getting too far off topic. I don't want to get too deep into that today. And maybe just give them a quick superficial answer and encourage them to reach out to you after the session. Right. So, you know, just giving you a quick bit of background, um, about where I'm coming from on, uh, well, not just a lot of this, all of it really is, you know, when I first started speaking, it was something I was, I was really excited about. Right. I, and it was something I'd always wanted the opportunity to do. And, and, you know, once the novelty of anything like that wears off and assuming you still enjoy it, then, then you, have to, you start thinking about how do I take things to the next level, right? There comes a point later on where then you start considering, is this worthwhile or not? Is the ROI there? Is it paying off? Is it worth it for me to take all this time that I have to take to invest in preparing for the presentation, giving the presentation, being away for a week or whatever it takes to be there and, and do it? You know, and you start evaluating all that stuff. Once the initial excitement about just doing it and speaking and the exposure of it, where is off, right? And everybody's in a different place. For some people, the exposure makes it very much worthwhile to do. 
For others, maybe not as much. So everybody is different. There's no right or wrong answer on this stuff. Um, and I learned two years ago that presenting at every possible conference, while an honor, is not actually very productive. A couple of years ago, I did that. I was at every single conference from ZeroCon to Sage Summit to, of course, QuickBooks Connect. And uh, then it was still Sleater. It was the last Sleater one. You know, I did them all. And I was barely home during that, like, four- or five-month period. And at the end, six months later, which I felt was the appropriate time to really look back and evaluate it, I said, I don't know that I really saw the ROI on all of that. I had a lot of fun, you know, and it was great It was in that sense. But, but I, don't, I didn't really see the payoff. So, you know, I decided this year that I really just wanted to do QuickBooks Connect um, because I wanted to pick one. The reality is I see almost all of the same great friends and extended family that I love and get to see at these things. You know, at all of them, there might be a few that went to scaling or account text that I won't see at QuickBooks Connect, unfortunately. But I decided I needed to pick one and stick with it. So I chose QuickBooks Connect. Uh, probably the biggest reason is it's the most convenient one for me to go to, right? And, and the other reason is I've pretty much at this point for my consulting practice gone all in with QuickBooks Online uh, as, as far as my core accounting product choice. Um, and I'm intimately familiar with them all. I've done trainings on all of them. And I still do one-on-one -on -one trainings with people on any of them. But for the actual consulting clients that we take on at Nerd Enterprises, it's all QuickBooks Online. Even as far as QuickBooks Connect itself is concerned, I decided this year I only wanted to do one. And I'll tell you why, it's one simple answer, and it has everything to do with exactly what I'm presenting on this year at QuickBooks Connect. And it can be summed up in one word, focus. Right, I decided that I wanted to do one presentation and give it everything I've got and do a real bang up job on it before I, you know, so, so that I wouldn't be sidetracked with three different presentations, but I can focus on doing one and doing it really well. And isn't it funny how that's also a theme in terms of how a lot of us like to suggest running our businesses, do one thing, the one thing you do better than anything else and do it really well. So, so like I said, I decided I'd rather do one and absolutely knock it out of the park with what I did on that one. And you'll see today I'm already so much better prepared for this one that I'm doing this year than I've ever been in previous years. In previous years, the week before, I'm still wrapping things up with a lot of the stuff I'm doing for the presentations. And so it's already making a difference and paying off for me that I decided to take that more focused sort of approach on, you know, in terms of the presentations themselves. So today I'm going to show you exactly how I'm planning on, on doing that, knocking it out of the park, right? Anyone you speak to at these events, um, you know, know that, like I said before, they don't pay, uh, it's, you don't do it for the money, right? Um, and like I said, if you do it for the exposure, that's fine, because you do it for the prestige and the exposure, and that's worth something, no question. But as a lot of us, I think, um, perhaps those of us who've done speaking at these events for a while now, you'll find a lot of us saying things like, I can't put exposure in the bank. That's the only problem with exposure, right? Let me turn off those uh, enter and exit chimes real quick. Get those off. Seth, um, are you not doing Zoom Zoom streaming today to Facebook Live? I just oh, you know sure. what? Thank you so much for reminding me. Let me do that. Right. Actually, no. You know what? I'm not going to. Okay. Because this is. I'm going to put the recording up tomorrow. So. Um, let me just see something here. Do, 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 do. You know what? Yeah. What the hell? We'll go live on Facebook real quick. Bear with me one second while I do that. And I just want to put an input on uh, when you mentioned Google Docs are really helpful for preparing for presentation. So I, yeah, I, I can't agree with you more. Um, what I have found is really helpful is when you start your Google Docs, I'll create, you know, of course, a Google folder and I'll name it QuickBook Connect. And then in my case, I usually have, you know, I wish I could be like you and just have one presentation, but usually I'll have like two or three. And so I'll create folders for each one. I'll start the doc, but then there'll be one doc that will have just a ton of reference links. And so whatever I need to like get focused, I'll go into that doc and I can just reference like all the different materials that I have. At this point, there's been no other like tool that will allow me to see everything at once like that. And I'm sure in your doc, you have tons of references too. So I just think it's so incredibly powerful. And then you can do it on any computer, on any on any device and it's just amazing yeah it's, and you'll see I have another way of really approaching the same thing and that's what I'm going to be walking through actually at the very end because I'm going to sort of recap everything with uh, 
with how I kind of bring it all together and keep it organized for the day of the event. So we are now officially live on Facebook. Everybody say hello to Facebook. Wave hello. And so now I, now I gotta check back and look for comments on the Facebook page. So, um, all right, so back to where we were. Um, one thing I want you to consider, because again, we're doing it for the exposure, and that is worth something. Uh, and like I said, you know, one year I had a conversation with, I'm not gonna, you know, I don't want, I'm not here to like, you know, throw anybody under the bridge or whatever. <clears throat> but one of the companies that has conferences, you know, had invited me and I turned it down. Um, and, you know, when they asked why, I told them point blank, you know, it doesn't really pay enough. And it doesn't pay for me to do it at that point. And they, you know, of course, they brought up the exposure thing. And I was honest with them. I said, look, I get it. I get that the exposure is makes it very much worthwhile for a lot of people. And I said to the person, you know, I said, but you need to understand from my perspective, A, I'm not asking you to treat me any different. I'm not saying pay me more money than you're paying other speakers. What I was trying to convey is that for me, the exposure at this point doesn't necessarily do it for me for one real simple reason. I have now over 12,000 subscribers on YouTube. Every time I upload one video to YouTube, 12,000 people get notified about it. No conference is going to give me anything comparable to that kind of exposure. The maximum attendees at these conferences is usually about 1,000 people, and only a small portion of those are even going to be in my session. Right, and maybe a little larger population is gonna see my profile picture on the speaker page of the event. But the reality is, and this is my experience and my opinion, of course, and you're welcome to disagree, the exposure at this point for me doesn't do it. 10 years ago it did, right? But today, not as much, right? I get much more bang for my buck uploading videos to YouTube today. And then doing everything else I get to do with social media on that. So, now consider this. In terms of speaking at these things, and I'm sharing my screen, I don't really need to be, unless you all enjoy looking at my boat, which is not really my boat yet. Um, so consider this though. We're, you know, we're going to these conferences that serve the accounting industry. And I want you to think about this question very carefully. Are you being exposed to your target audience, really? You know, is it your target audience who are actually sitting in the audience while you're presenting to them, right? Now it may be, it may be that your intention is to serve other accounting and bookkeeping professionals, which means you're in front of your perfect target audience, right? <clears throat> but if you're somebody who's, let's say, building a consulting practice, and let's just use the example that you're one of your target audiences, maybe your only target audience for your actual business is serving real estate professionals, right? In a case like that, wouldn't you be better off speaking at a conference for the National Association of Realtors, right? I mean, that's where I'd be looking to speak if, if real estate was my niche or niche, depending on which version of that word you prefer. Um, so that's something I wanted to throw out there for you to think about. Now, what I did, because I found myself speaking at these conferences where the audience were other accounting and bookkeeping professionals, was I said to myself, okay, then I should probably start preparing materials and package things digitally for that would cater to accounting professionals, right? Because I, I should at least do something in my consulting business to serve the audience that I am getting that exposure to. So that's something very important that I think we all need to be thinking about if we're speaking at conferences is, who's our audience? Are they our target audience? And if they're not, but we enjoy speaking at these things, because I know I love to, then let's find a way to make that, that audience our target audience, or at least part of it, right? And so that's what I did. I started creating videos and courses and things that were aimed at accounting and bookkeeping professionals, things that based on feedback I got, I felt would be helpful to that particular audience, right? And obviously that paid off and it was worthwhile. And long story short, I have things like my 97 and up program and, and, and the, you know, the other courses that are included in that for 25 and up on the nerdenterprises.com site in the subscription based training area, right? All that was really built to serve, well, it was really built to serve both the business owners and the accounting professionals. Cause in either case I could see where, people would benefit from, from that content. So, so now let's talk about how we can present like pros. Because like I said, I wanted to rip through the beginning part pretty quickly, and now I wanna really get into the meat of things. And I wanna talk about passion and purpose to start with, right? When I present on a topic, I know it so well, I could probably do it with no preparation in many cases. You could probably throw a topic at me, and if it's a topic I'm passionate about and experienced with, I would have no problem at this point getting up on stage and talking for an hour about that subject. <clears throat> because I know it well and because I love it that much and, I, and I'm so intimately acquainted with it. 
And as I mentioned earlier, I could probably speak the whole hour in a single breath, right? So anyone who knows me would, would attest to that. And I'm overstating the obvious here, but I think it should be overstated that we need to be passionate and be in love with our topic, right? You need to be absolutely in love with whatever it is you're going to present about. Because that's going to translate in so many ways besides the obvious. You know, one thing I learned way back in sales uh, when I was working actually as a stockbroker on Wall Street was uh, they would put up the word enthusiasm on the whiteboard and they would underscore the letters I-A-S-M, and this is going to be in your notes, and they said the I-A-S-M in enthusiasm stands for I am sold myself, right? I have to be sold myself on this stuff if I'm going to be effective at conveying a message to someone else. What we're doing, even though we don't look at it like this and probably don't even like to look at it like this, it is on some levels sales. We're trying to uh, convey a message to people and we're hoping they're going to latch on to that message and relate to it and agree with it and, and then share it with others, right? That's a big part of what we're hoping to do here. We're hoping to have people walk away with something that maybe they didn't necessarily have before, right? So the moral of that story is if you're not completely excited about your subject, how can you possibly expect others to get excited about it? You know, think about your tone of voice when you're desperately trying to convince your spouse or a good friend to go do something fun with you. That's how you should sound when you're on stage. You know, work on that. I think that's really important. If I got up and, and started this webinar off and just talked very monotone, like, hey, all right, you know, it's Friday. We're going to talk about presenting. Can't wait. You know, if I was talking like this, you'd, none of you, half of you would be signing off by now, especially if I'd been talking like that for the last 20 minutes, right? So get excited about what you're presenting. This is an amazing opportunity. Don't blow it by not being excited as you should be. Let your excitement about the fact that you're even getting to speak at something like this translate into excitement about your subject as well. It should all kind of blend together and funnel together into, you know, one outcome. So, you know, and if this kind of excitement doesn't come easily and naturally to you, then you may have chosen the wrong topic in all honesty, right? So be grateful about the opportunity. Gratitude, I think, is really important here. Um, you know, be grateful about the opportunity, and then this gets even easier. Never take anything for granted, period. You know, so the presentation part is actually easy if you think about it. Do what you love and do it honestly, and then you'll have no trouble getting excited about what you're doing. Excitement is extremely contagious, and if you're excited, your audience will be excited as well, right? Confidence is everything, and confidence comes, of course, from being prepared. That preparation both happens in terms of the experience that you have that led you up to the point where you knew your topic well enough to even be asked to speak, right? But one really important thing to know on this is, is an important question, and this actually, somebody threw this at me recently at, over breakfast I was having with actually one of my neighbors, <coughs> and uh, I thought it was a really interesting question to ponder. So I'm going to throw the question out there and be silent for a few seconds because I really want you to think about this. Do you know what the difference between confidence and arrogance is? Also gave me an opportunity to sip my coffee. Arrogance lacks humility, and confidence comes from humility and experience. They're actually practically polar opposites, even though they sound like the same thing. In some respects, they may even look the same, but there's a huge difference between the two. So it's important to have confidence and not be arrogant, of course, right? You've got the experience part down, you know, or you wouldn't be here. So let's get into the meat of this, uh, which is what I'm thinking and hoping you've all been here waiting for. Anybody, any questions, comments on anything I've said so far before I dive in? This is a good time to pause. I actually just want to uh, comment on your excitement. So those of you, like many of us, the call do get but really Mariette, excited. Your, your audio, mentor your, mine Mariette, something. Mariette, your audio is cutting out a lot. It's very difficult. It's like every other word is coming through. Okay. All right, so Marietta, if you if you're able to get that resolved, you know, come back, of course, please, and uh, and uh, you know, I'll give you the floor. Okay, and if nobody else has anything, then I will move on. Okay, so the first step is what I actually showed you about today's presentation right off the bat. Write it all out. 
And again, I strongly encourage you to use Google Docs for this, and you'll see why later on. We've already touched on it. Mariette also mentioned it. You know, at the core, the ability to easily link to it from lots of different places, from any number of different places, is really what underlies all the reasons for using Google Docs and not Microsoft Word. And I'll touch on it real quick since I brought it up. You know, one of the differences, if I write something in Microsoft Word, and then let's say I want it in my, pro my cloud-based project management app, I've got to upload that document. If I want to make changes, I've got to download the document, make my edits, and then upload it again. And it's even that alone is enough friction to really slow me down. And, and if you're like me, you want to do things super fast. I don't want to waste any time. Every second is valuable. And so I want something that's good and efficient. So with a live Google Doc linked, you know, because Google Doc is a cloud-based document, and I have it linked in another cloud-based app, I click on a link, I edit my document, that's it. And if I'm sharing it with somebody else for any reason, let's say I have a graphic designer that I want sharing it with because I want them to go in there and create images for me, any number of reasons I might want to share this stuff, it just makes it so much easier when I have everything truly and purely cloud-based. You know, so, so again, it serves two really important, important purposes. Before I create the first PowerPoint slide, I write it all out as if I'm writing an ebook or a blog post or a white paper, whatever you call it. I have this detailed outline. And then... You know, tomorrow, as I said, uh, when the video for the Zoom goes up, you know, so will my step one as a download for you be available, the very document I showed you when we first started. Now, first of all, this is a giveaway, and people love to have that. I'll often start by telling people there's no need to take notes. Better you should stay focused with me, and I'll have detailed notes for you to download, and you'll have the recording as well, right? Next, the act of writing this all out in and of itself gets your thoughts organized, right? Now you're ready to create your PowerPoint. You pull things out of what you've written and create your slides. And I know there's you know, different approaches to how to create these slides. I am of the school of thought that I want simple slides with a few words on it that when the slide comes up, it triggers you know, me to know what I want to talk about while that slide is up, and then, and then I advance accordingly. And that goes back to really knowing your topic. And of course, you should practice before the day. And we'll talk about that a little later on, right? Excuse me. Um, step two, outline any other materials you can give away. Now I'm going to go back to sharing my screen because now we're going to now we're going to really get into it here. So one thing I've done is I use Evernote among other things, and I like Evernote because it's in the cloud essentially. It is a desktop app that's syncing to the cloud, but it's got the mobile app, which is really cool. So in Evernote in my business notes, I have uh, a stack called events and speaking engagements. And within that, I have QuickBooks Connect 2017. Now you'll see as of right now, there's not a whole lot in here. Uh, you know, there doesn't need to be. I have a little, I always have like scrap notes where I just want to scribble stuff down if I have ideas, especially while I'm working on this one particular thing. But here is my materials package for QBC 2017. One is the time management and revenue goals template. That's actually a Google sheet that I'm going to be discussing and sharing during my presentation. The second is the very write-up that we've been talking about, the ebook or session notes or whatever you want to call it, a white paper, if you will, right? The next is tweets for the session. I'm going to talk about that, but you know, everybody likes to tweet during your session at these events, and there's an official hashtag for the event. And so rather than have people sitting there frantically trying to type something I just said, I come prepared with the tweets on the web, on a page, where, and you're going to see, we're going to go over this in a few minutes, how you can set it up. So all they have to do is click on it, and it will automatically put the tweet in the Compose Tweet dialog on Twitter, so that all they have to do is click and send. And it will come complete with the hashtag and any mentions that you want in there, so you make it easy for them. So they don't have to think about it, and it also helps them stay more focused on your session, because while they're sitting there trying to remember exactly what you said and type it on their mobile device on Twitter, you're getting away from them already. Right, so it just makes it easier for them. So after you've written that write up, you pull tweets out of that. And I'm gonna show you how I organize it in Smartsheet to compile the tweets and also at the same time make sure that it conforms to the 140 character limit, which as of this week, by the way, Twitter announced they're increasing it to 280, but it's not available yet everywhere. As of the last time I checked yesterday, mine were still limited to 140. So if it races the limit to to 280 between now and QuickBooks Connect, which I suspect they probably will. I'm sure it won't take that long to roll it all out. I still wanna make sure I'm covered and I'm gonna keep it all under 140 for now, right? And you'll see I've already gotten all those tweets written because once I have that outline written, you know, that step one done, then it's easy to pull stuff out from there to do the PowerPoint and to do the tweets, right? 
The next thing I'm going to do, and we're going to show you this also, is we're going to, I'm going to pre-record a video of my session. And that's going to be another giveaway. And then I also have something else I'm working on called 140 QBO tips, which really isn't necessarily an integral part of my session itself, but it's something I'm going to bring, you know, for QuickBooks Connect this year. And of course, during my session, I'm going to mention that, you know, it's something people will have access to. And I'm going to explain a little bit more than I will today about exactly what that is and how it works. Right. So that's step two. Outline any other stuff you can give away. And this helps. And as you can see, I've got check boxes so you can see which things are done and which things aren't. I haven't done my video yet, and the 140 QBO tips aren't all. I don't have 140 of them yet. Okay, and then while we're here, the other main thing I have here is the email that they sent out to the speakers with the information and the PowerPoint and of course the key deadlines. I want I want quick access to that because I look at this pretty frequently to remind myself and make sure that I'm on point with meeting whatever deadlines into it needs me to meet. You know, it's important. I don't want to be one of those speakers that they have to sort of chase after in order to make sure that I'm doing what I'm supposed to, you know. I want them to treat me like an adult and accordingly I want to act like an adult, right? <clears throat> so now we get to step three, which is pre-write your tweets. So let's bring up my document here. And this way we can give a very clear and concise example of exactly what I'm talking about. So what I did was I actually linked them here. And this is a link notice directly to a Smartsheet project because Smartsheet is also a cloud-based app. And this is where I prepared the, the tweets. And so here's how I did it. So I have here, you know, the, the, the title or the, the main, you know, uh, update, right? Then in the next column, I have the hashtags that I want included. Of course, I want my Twitter handle mentioned when people are retweeting me. Here's where I test the length. As you can see, I've put conditional formatting in here to let me know where I'm over 140, so I've got to edit that stuff and get it down to under 140 characters. Although if they raise it to 280, then I probably will be okay. And then here is the combined tweet. Now in Smartsheet, uh, the way you do this, and this is just the view-only version, so let me get into the actual Smartsheet project here. Let's go to uh, Services, Project Management, Smartsheet. Now you can see how organized my book bookmarks are. Um, wrong one, though. We're going to get the Smartsheet status. <laughs> so here's the actual project, not the view-only version that you were just looking at. And over here, a lot of us, I, I assume, know Excel pretty well, so we know the concatenate formula. Here it's much simpler than that. You just, you point to something and hit the plus sign to combine text strings, right? So really easy to write this smart sheet equivalent of the concatenate formula. And so, of course, what this does is it compiles the pieces that I put here. And doing it like this makes it really easy for me to, you know, if I want to change something, if I want to use a different hashtag, or maybe the subject of that particular tweet is uh, something that involves another one of our brands or friends that I want to mention somebody else in there, it makes it really easy for me to update the different pieces of this and get the final result here. And then once we've got the final result, we're going to, when we get to the WordPress part in a little bit, I'm going to show you how we take this and get it onto a web page where, like I said earlier, somebody can just click or tap on it and instantly get a tweet composed so that all they have to do is click or tap and then hit send, and it populates the tweet for them entirely. I'm seeing the chat go off, but honestly, if you could unmute and ask your questions, that would be much better because it's hard hey, for me to... Seth, I have a question about that because that's brilliant, first of all. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I always ask my, my audience to tweet. Like, I always tell them, let's tweet. I want you to tweet how awesome this event is and how you're so pumped. But if I can tell them that there's a tweet done and they just have to click on it, but are we asking them to go to our website to click on it? To open You'll see. Up. So, so okay. this is an example of where you're getting ahead of me, but I'm going to show you how this all comes together. Okay. And I'm going to show it. you because there's a whole process here that gets us to that point. And rest assured for now, I'm going to show you by the end of this hour how they're going to be able to just give me their email address and then they're going to get redirected to a page that's got everything they need. Ah, and you get their email address that way. Brilliant. Exactly. Bingo. Awesome. Awesome. All right, so, so for now, you know, you can, use, you can do this in Google Sheets or Excel too, but I like Smartsheet for this um, because it has some, you know, a little extra uh, power in terms of, you know, the project management capabilities that it has. You know, like if I do want to make notes about something in here, then, of course, I have 
the comments bubble or if you know while I'm working on it I can use smart sheet alerts there's a lot I can use in here that's not available in a spreadsheet right to help me manage this and put it together for the day of the event right so that's gonna be uh, you know the step three is pre-write your session tweets pull it out of your content you know and, and here in the notes I've just expanded on pretty much what I've just said people are gonna want to quote you this makes it much easier for them right now the next thing, step four, pre-record a video of your presentation. You saw that already when I showed you the list of deliverables that I want to have. Camtasia makes this really easy. And assuming you've got your uh, presentation done in PowerPoint, which you have to because Intuit requires it be in their PowerPoint template, there's a Camtasia add-on that goes with PowerPoint. If you open up PowerPoint, you should see that add-on there. If you don't, and you've already installed Camtasia, it means you probably skipped it and told it no when you're installing Camtasia. So all you need to do, and the easiest thing, because I've tried this, the easiest thing to do is uninstall Camtasia and then reinstall it and look for that prompt. I promise you, if you have PowerPoint installed in your computer while you're installing Camtasia, it will prompt you during the installation process and ask you if you want that add-on to be put into PowerPoint. And once you've got that add-on in from within PowerPoint, you'll see the little uh, Camtasia add-on tab, and you can start recording your PowerPoint directly to Camtasia. So there's two reasons for this, um, really three, I guess. <coughs> it's great practice, right? Uh, it's another thing to give away. And going back to the email addresses, Marriott, this would be the most compelling reason for people to give you their email address, is because you're going to give them a video of this session. Another reason they don't need to take notes and they can stay focused with you because you have a pre-recorded video that goes over everything you're about to go through in the next hour. One caveat, and we're going to get to this when we talk about MailChimp, they're not going to get it today. I don't want them distracted during my session with trying to download the video. So I tell them straight up when they give me their email address, and we're going to get to this in a few minutes, that all, all, they're not going to get the video emailed them, to them until tomorrow. And that can be configured in MailChimp, and I'm going to show you how. Right, so, so they don't get the video till the next day because I want them focused here and now for while I'm giving the presentation. But it gives them that sort of comfort and peace of mind that I can tell them, hey, you're gonna get the video tomorrow, guaranteed. And if for some reason somebody has trouble, just email me, you've now seen my website, you're gonna, you know how to find me if you have any trouble and I'll make sure that you get the video. But Seth, are you encouraging them to tweet during your session or you don't yes. want them to get, oh, you are encouraging them to do that? Again, because I'm making it easy for them by giving them something they can just tap or click okay. on. Right. Got it. So now we get to the setting up MailChimp, right? So that's the first thing we want to do. Let's go into MailChimp. And again, if you have constant contact, that works too. MailChimp is just what I happen to choose. I used to use constant contact. I switched over to MailChimp. And I'm not going to walk through the entire setup process. I want to show you the highlights. Most of this, I know we're all pretty smart people here. So most of this you're going to be able to figure out, especially once you see what I'm showing you here. And of course, I, I say it and I mean it here, right here, right now. If you get stuck on anything or have trouble or need any help after this, you know, you know where to find me. I'm more than happy to help you all out. All right. So really from MailChimp to create the new list, we're just going to go here to lists. Okay, and here's my new list, QuickBooks Connect 2017. And all you do here is click Create List. And it, it warns you maybe you want to create a group. You know, instead of a list, that's a way of you. There's lots of ways MailChimp gives you to segment your main list into different, you know, based on different behaviors, based on people who open all of your emails versus those who open a smaller percentage. Lots of, and also geography. There's lots of different ways you can segment your list so you can send more targeted emails. Don't worry about all that. Just go create a list right, and create a blank list, and it's gonna walk you through some important settings where the reply to goes. And the other important thing about products like MailChimp or Constant Contact is they're gonna make sure that you're in compliance with the uh, Can Spam Act, right? They're gonna make sure that you your emails conform to the rules. You have to have your address on there, a physical address. You have to have your email. You have to have the unsubscribe link. It's all there, right? And have fun with it, right? When you create the list, it's going to ask you to write a little blurb that explains to people who are on that list and getting an email why they got an email. And so you can say, hey, you're on this list because you were awesome and you attended my QuickBooks Connect conference in 2017. That's why you're getting an email. Feel free to unsubscribe. We hate spam too. You know, like don't go with the generic boring language. Stand out. Be different. Do something that gets people's attention, just like you should do when you're on stage and doing these kind of things, right? So we're going to create a list in MailChimp. I'm gonna pull this off to my other screen so I can follow along without distracting you. Um, so once we've got MailChimp created, now we're really ready to get into WordPress, right? That's the main thing is we have to have the platform in place, the engine behind 
how we're going to gather the email address and then offer them the materials that we want them to have during the session and anything that we want to be sending them subsequent to the session. Right? Let me check Facebook real quick, see if we have any comments. Uh, Kathy says, dumb question, but is there a list of workshops uh, on QB Connect that we can pre-register? Uh, you can answer. I think if you go to the QuickBooks Connect site, it has the whole agenda. I'm not sure if you can specifically click and like register for a session. I believe they've done that in the past though. So pr the answer is probably yes, but I can't guarantee it. Uh, Sarah says, Gina, I'm on my way to the doctor, late hitting con flu. We flew to Louisville for months. Okay, that looks like it's a direct message from Sarah to Gina. <laughs> so feel better, Sarah. Okay, good enough. So now I'm going to go into my main Nerd Enterprises site. And this is where we're going to really get into the meat of it. I know we only have 15 minutes left, but you'll see that's really all we needed. You know, and I wanted to give you all that background to get to lead up to this point. I felt it was important. So hopefully you'll have your sites done in WordPress. There's a lot of reasons for that. In my 97 and up program, the second section of the course that's included with that program covers all WordPress stuff. It basically shows you, yes, you should hire a professional to design your site if you can afford to, if you've got the budget, but then you should also have enough knowledge to know how to get in here and do some of the kind of stuff we're going to do today, right? You'll need to understand how to create a post, how to create a page, the difference between the two, and most importantly for our purposes today, what a plugin is. And we're going to go into some of that. So when I'm logged into WordPress, I get this menu bar across the top, right? And we're going to need the Mail Munch plugin, which is a plugin that goes with MailChimp. Okay, it's a different company, but it's a, it's a plugin that works with MailChimp, and that's what we're going to use. We need two pages, and just bear with me, and I promise you it's all going to come together. You're going to need a lead page, and a lead page is a page that's on your site that has zero navigation because there's only one thing to do. Give me your email address and hit submit. Right, that's a lead page. And it's important that there's no other navigation on the site because you know how we all are, we're ADD freaks, right? So if I have anything else to click on or anything else to do on that page, I'm gonna start saying, oh, let me click here, what's that? What, especially a site like mine that has a ton of things going on, right? So, so a lead page, it's very important from a sales and marketing standpoint. It's, it has one sole purpose, to capture an email address. And how are you gonna do that? Because you're giving something away in exchange for that email address, in today's case, the list of things that I mentioned right? And you kind of, you kind of get to hold your audience hostage during the day of your event because right then and there, they're going to need to give you their email address to get the downloads even for the session, the, the, the presentation materials, right? Because that's another thing you can add to the list that I do mention later on in the outline is you can take your PowerPoint once it's all done and save it as a PDF and make that PDF an available download. A lot of people like to get the slides. In my case, I feel like the slides are a waste of time because like I said, they're usually just a few word phrases on each slide. So that's not really that useful to people. What I'm going to give them in the Google Doc much more useful. So we're in the back end of WordPress and if you don't already have the MailMunch plugin, you're going to go to plugins and you're going to go to add new. MailMunch. And I'm going to show you. I'll do the search for MailMunch so you can see exactly what the branding looks like so that there won't be any mistake about you know what to grab and whether or not it's the right thing. In regards to Kathy's question, Seth, um, the best option is uh, to download the, Q, uh, the QuickBooks Connect app and you can create your agenda on there and you can move things around. But it's so convenient because every morning you can see what you actually, you know, set up to do and then you can move day, you know, if you don't want to go to that and go to something else, but the QB Connect app is, is essential when you're actually at the event. Right. Okay, so notice there's two here that are very similar. Right, and I believe I went with, you know, it's a good question. I don't remember which one I did. I think either one of these will work. But uh, actually, this is MailChimp Forms by MailMunch. You want MailMunch, grow your email list. So get this one. I believe this is the one I have. Let's confirm. I'm going to go to installed plugins so I can tell you a thousand percent for sure which one I'm using. And the key here is MailMunch used to be just a way to create email capture forms on your website, but they added the lead pages like within the last few months. And I said, oh my God. And I said it just like that too. It's like, oh my God. So we want MailChimp forms by MailMunch, actually. So I believe that was actually the, the second one. Right, let's back up. That's priceless to get a Seth geek out moment. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> 
MailChimp forms by MailMunch, that's what you want. Now, once you have that, you'll see this menu that just says MailChimp, and notice you have three choices, forms, landing pages, and settings, right? So we wanna create a landing page. Landing page, lead page, basically the same thing. Not even basically, they are the same thing, different words. Tomato, tomato. Now what's going to happen, and you're probably wondering, okay, great, so I create this lead page or landing page, but how's it gonna to connect to my MailChimp account? And I'm gonna show you that there's a part, and you'll only need to do this once when you're creating your first form or landing page. So here, it actually what it does is, and here's where one of the two pages comes in. Don't create the pages in WordPress until you set up your lead page, because your lead page, when you're creating it with MailMunch, is going to ask you what page you want to use or create for the purposes of the lead page. So notice, mine is gonna be forward slash QBC 2017, right? And you can go there now and you'll see the page, right? And I'm gonna show it to you, but don't go there now because stay, you know, stay focused with me on this. When I go to edit the page, it walks you through step by step. It really couldn't be much easier. Now you'll notice that I have mine in my greens and blues. And the way that I did that, and this is important, when I had my site designed and Shane McFarlane, who designed my site this time, um, you know, helped me come up with the branding that had to do with one of my logos that I've been using over the years, I got the hex codes that let me figure out exactly which color green and which color of blue to use. So if somebody else has designed your site or helped you create your branding, you'll wanna make sure you've got those hex codes. And guess where I have my hex codes stored? In Evernote. Thank you. Who said that? You get a gold star. Laura, because mine are in Evernote too. Laura, you win. You win a free <laughs> video. So, <Woo! laughs> and you're getting a video, and you're getting a video. So, I get a video. Those hex codes will save the day. As you walk through this process, you'll see where you have the opportunity. You can click on a section, and here's background color. And what I did was rather than play around with this, I actually pasted my hex code right in here. You can see it there. The only stumbling block I had particularly here is that usually the hex code has a, a little hashtag in front of it. In this case, they don't want the hashtag. I was pasting it in with the hashtag and it was coming out with the wrong color and then I noticed the, it was removing the hashtag and screwing it all up. So, so in this particular case, you paste it without the hashtag, but normally you wanna paste the whole hex code in. So you're gonna go through and you're gonna design it. Notice here, it has first, last, email, let's go, right? Like I said, one thing to do on this page. I also threw it in there that from the same page, and let's go view the page now so you can kind of see what this looks like. And notice what I did there. I right clicked the view page option and opened it in a new tab. I do that a lot so I don't lose my place here while I'm trying to see what it looks like here. It's a little bit garbled because of the, uh, the WordPress login header. It won't look like that on a user's browser. This is just because I'm logged into WordPress. But notice there's no navigation. Right? Normally on any page on my site, there'd be a ton of things to click on. And here it is, like I said, first, last email, let's go. And so they're gonna, I'm gonna give them this page when I start the presentation. I'm gonna say, go to nerdenterprises.com slash QBC 2017. It's an, you wanna make it really easy. You don't wanna have this long URL. My domain name is long enough as it is, but most people can figure that out pretty well. And then I have here where they could actually click on to grab the template. But I'm also gonna tell them, don't worry, because once you give me your email, you're gonna get redirected to a page that's got the template linked on it, right? And so that's page number two, is the page that they're gonna get redirected to. And so I'm not gonna get into too much depth here in terms of design. You can play with this on your own, and you should play with this on your own, and, and learn how to use this kind of stuff, because it's gonna help you not just here, but any other time you're doing some kind of a presentation, right? Hey, Seth, I have a question. Sure. Okay. Um, if you're going to add the names to your MailChimp list and you were talking about whether to add them in as a segment or a second group, if I was going to add them, I would want them to be able to get the autoresponders from this, but then also become part of my regular list. So if sure. I add it as a segment of my master list, can I send specific emails and automate them just to the segment? You can. You can do it based on join date even. You can set up logic in MailChimp around that. But here's the thing. And this is what I, I feel like I need to sort of caution, you know, not just you, but anybody about on this is if you're going to do that and get them into your main list, you need to make sure they're aware that they're signing up to be on your main list, right? What I do here is two things. They go into their own special list so I can create a specific automation around that list. It's just a lot easier to design the logic. 
Um, and then what I can do is two things. I can actually, MailChimp makes it easy. I can actually click that on my main list and merge them. So I can merge all the people from the oh. QBC list to my main list. Okay. Um, but what I prefer to do, just because it's kinder to the user, is invite them to join my main list and say, hey, look, out of respect, I'm not going to just slam you into my main list and assume that you want to get all my emails. You know, if you do maybe one of the follow-up emails to that list specifically, we'll invite them to sign up for my permanent list. Like, hey, if you love my content, if you love what I've shown you here. It's just, to me, that's the... You know, you can get away with it if you want to merge the list, but that's the, I guess, for lack of a better way to put it, the nicer way to do it, right? Okay, got it. Yeah, thanks. Give them the choice, you know. So, um, but real quick, when we're doing the integration, this is where you'll actually log into your MailChimp account, and here is where I told it which list in MailChimp to associate this lead page with, right? So it makes it really easy when you're setting this up to link this up to your MailChimp account. And down here it said, here's the MailChimp fields, and here's the opt-in form field. So even though it seems like it should be obvious and straightforward, it isn't, they don't assume it is, so you actually have to tell it which, so in this case, first name goes with just name, last name goes with last name, right? And I created and set it up that way. Uh, then on publishing, wait, let's go back to thank you. So thank you is where I actually see here, it says type the URL where you want subscribers to be redirected. That's page number two. So I created page number two in my website. Let's go to pages. <coughs> oh, sorry, that's landing pages. I want to go to actually the main website pages. So here. I've never understood the order they put things in on the WordPress menu here. Okay, so my second page. Oh, wait, I just saw it. I have a lot of pages. My second page actually has the session name all written out, planning and focus the real keys to success. So let's go view this page. And because now I have like four minutes left to show you the rest. I'll go through all of it and spend a few extra minutes for those of you who care to stay. If not, don't worry, you'll have it in the recording. So here's that page. So once they submit their email, I take this URL of this page back into MailMunch, and it's on the thank you part where I paste it in and say, after they hit submit, I want you to take them over to this page, right? Now this page, first thing in large icons is here's the Google Sheet template, right? Make sure that you configure your links to open up in a new tab so they don't get taken away from this page, right? So when they click on this, it opens the template that I'm going to be talking about during my session right here. And by the way, important tip for when you're sharing a Google document with an audience and you don't want them having added access, they get view-only access, and right on the first tab, I show them how to get their own editable copy. I gave them a screenshot. They click file, make a copy, and it puts a fully editable copy in their own MyDrive that's not linked to yours anymore. So your changes won't impact theirs and vice versa, right? So that's important if you're using a Google document template, you know, to, to give them that logic. Because a lot of people won't, and then you'll start getting hundreds of requests to share your document with people. So that's there, and of course, this is gonna be linked to the actual session notes which actually it's already linked up. Here's a document that people who come to my session on the day of are gonna get. And so this way, again, once it finishes loading, they can make a copy and they can make their notes directly in here on the document, right? Notice also I've got the uh, outline uh, turned on for Google Docs so that I can easily jump around and have this open during my session if I need to. And when I do the presentation, I don't do the duplicate screen. I do the extend so I can control what goes on the screen that's seen by everyone versus what's on my computer locally. So I can have things like notes like these to reference back to and not lose my place on things. So I want to stick with kind of the design part of this real quick because I want to stay focused on this. So again, configure these links to open up in a new tab. You don't want them off the page. And now, Mariette, here's those links where, watch this, and I've got more to add, and I'm gonna show you how to add these. I'm gonna show you a really cool service called Click to Tweet, and we're gonna add a few more tweets to this page from my Smartsheet. So right now, the way this is configured, right on the same page, and I'll tell them during the session, scroll down for the tweets so you don't have to sit there typing them out. And when they click on, for example, this first one, it automatically populates on Twitter.com with the entire tweet, all the mentions and hashtags, everything complete. So it's literally click and then tweet. That's so awesome. That's like 
worth this. Well, every second is worth being here, but geez, that's so amazing. Like, ah, I'm going to, I'm going to use that. So now let's see how to create that. Right. So I'm going to actually edit the WordPress page here that I had created. And now I need my smart sheet document, which I think, no, here it I is. I just have one quick question because you, you had that really long name of that page, but obviously they're not getting there by typing the name. They're probably exactly. just Exactly. They're getting redirected. Remember, yeah. that's the redirect in MailChimp. Right. So I don't care and I want the name in there for SEO reasons, right? Got it. Okay. So for that, and that's why that's beautiful because the page that I need to give them is simple. It's just forward slash QBC 2017. Give me your email and they're automatically taken to that page. You don't have to type a thing, right? So it makes it super easy. Um, let's go back to today's document. I have too many tabs open now. What creates an outline in, in Google Docs? Like what automatically creates that outline for It's in tools. So first of all, in tools, you turn on document outline. Uh, Second, okay. Then from there, it has to do with the formatting. So the problem here is formatted with heading two. So heading two oh. makes a bigger you know, um, um, right. header in the outline. Uh, make the plan, of, and notice it's like a table of contents. I can click on this to get to that part of the document. So make the plan is actually heading three. And then this one, the story of a real life client is bolded. No, this is heading four. Okay, and then down here, let's create a quick spreadsheet, uh, spreadsheet on this. This one is actually bolded and on its own line. So that's how the structure comes into play. It has right, to do with you. the formatting that you apply on the document. All right, so let's, let's go learn how to create these tweets because I'm here in my document, right? And what we want to do is we want to get into the text part of this. Notice we have two tabs here. When I'm editing a document in WordPress, there's visual and there's text. Text is where we can really put the HTML in. So I want to go down here to the very next line. And now we're going to come over here. Uh, not here, sorry. Where's my smart sheet? Planning and focus. Let's go there. And then we need one other tab open. And these are all linked in your notes from today. So don't worry about how you're going to find these. Click to tweet. If you Google it, it'll come right up. Click to tweet.com. And this makes it so easy. It's like crazy easy. We're gonna authorize the app. It just needs to link to my Twitter account, which I'm already logged into. Now watch how easy this is. So let's see where I'm at. And again, I'm gonna go view page open so I can not lose my place from the back end and scroll way down. So the last one is we set goals that are too vague. So I wanna get the next one after that, which is this one. Setting goals isn't enough. We need a plan for how we'll reach them. So I'm going to go to the right to where my whole entire tweet is compiled. This one conforms. It's under 140. Control C to copy. Go in here to click to tweet. Paste that in. I click generate new link. It thinks for a minute. I want to check off this option here that says open link in a new window when clicked. I click on the HTML code. Control C to copy into the page edit. So you don't have to know any HTML, you just have to know how to copy and paste, right? Enter to the next line, paste it in, go back to the visual tab. I can see that it showed up properly, right there, setting goals isn't enough, right? Update, refresh, and you can refresh while the other page in the background is still updating and it works. See, setting goals isn't enough. Notice it's centered, so now we'll go back in. We'll do the formatting. You get the idea. But that's how easy it is, especially if you do the work ahead of time and get it all laid out in Smartsheet. Now, later on today, it's going to take me probably 15 minutes to get the rest of those done because it's literally just copy and paste into click to tweet, copy and paste back into the WordPress HTML, right? And you saw how easy that is. You're just editing the page and using the HTML tab for that. So real quick. If, if they click it off of their phone, which they're probably going to be doing, it'll automatically recognize the tweet, Twitter works app. works exactly the same way. Okay. I tested it last night. It works perfectly. You just you tap it, and it will open up whatever your default Twitter app is. Right. And, which, by the way, I recommend just using Twitter, the actual Twitter app, um, and it'll drop the text right in. It works exactly the same way. And believe me, I tried hard coding the HTML on these, and it was cutting off the actual tweet. It was cutting off the hashtags and the mentions. So click to tweet just solved the problem. I don't know how they do it. I don't care. I just care that it works, right? That's the bottom line on that one. Um, awesome. Yeah. 
One other thing I noticed on your spreadsheet where you were creating tweets to share, you had a column for length. So that's adding the, the, the letters so that way you stay under the limit, right? Is that what that was? The length is a formula that says, give me the length of how many characters are in that row or right. that cell. So it's letting me know that if I go over 140, then I'm over the limit. Right. Okay, perfect. And then I use conditional formatting that said, if anything in here is over 140, light it up for me so I can see clearly where I need to edit my copy. So awesome. Thank you. Yep. Yep. Um, and I've got a million tabs open. Here's my document. I found it. I couldn't find my document for today. So we've got WordPress prepared. Um, I said, I mentioned you don't want to get the video, get, give them the video till tomorrow. Let's look at MailChimp. That's the last thing I think that's important to show you so you can see how to do the, uh, the automation, right? So let's go back into MailChimp. I will log in. We're going to go to campaigns. And we want to go to ongoing is where you'll find the automated. Ongoing is really like an automated campaign. When I go to create a campaign, they, this is newer. They have a thing where you can create ads like Facebook ads. So we're going to click create an email. And then we want to go up to automated. And the, the email that they're going to get right away when they sign up has to be the welcome email for that list. So you're going to choose welcome new subscribers, right? And immediate, so immediately when they sign up, they're going to get redirected to the page anyway. But just to cover the ADD people, what we'll want to do is actually have an autoresponder that goes out immediately welcoming them to the list and also linking them to that planning and focus page that I created, the second page, right? So this way, if somehow they close the tab on the redirect or don't get it, they're also going to get an email right away that actually gives them the link. So just, and again, keep it short because remember, they're getting this while they're in the session with you. So real short and sweet. Thank you so much for subscribing to the list. Tomorrow you're going to get a follow-up email with links to download the video and any other materials that I've promised. In the meantime, if you, if you missed the redirect to the page that's got the materials for today, click here and give them the link that takes them right back to the page on your website that you want them at during your presentation. Right? And it's really easy. It's like if you can edit a Word document or a Google Doc, you can edit one of these emails. They make it really easy to create. Right now, if I'm if I'm going beyond automated or beyond the welcome email, right? Then I want to go here to subscriber activity. No, I'm sorry, date based. Right. So this is where I'm going to create the email that goes out the next day with the link to download the video. In date based, we want to send an email based on when a subscriber joined your list. Now it's based on when they join your list. That doesn't mean it's going to be the same day. You're actually going to get to set the date. So I'm going to say QuickBooks Connect 2017, begin. And here's the welcome email. And here's actually, I've already started to create them. So here's email and notice the trigger, it says two days after the subscribers joined your list, right? So I want to change that to one day after. So we're going to edit the trigger. And actually it says wait one day after and then we're going to say update trigger so i don't know why it said two originally oh because this one is one day after so this says welcome to the newsletter and so it won't let you to do two different emails at the same proximity to when they joined so since i said one day for both of them it automatically just put this to the next available day so that's important so this really should be not one day after, but the day, but that's the welcome email. That's different from this, right? And I don't think it'll let me do zero. Yeah, see? So, and this is where it gets a little tricky, and I got tripped up with this, and I actually wound up with, on with MailChimp support on this. So these are the date-based emails. So the welcome email is the only email that you can configure to go out the minute they sign up. Anything after that is going to be date-based, which means the first one has to be at least one day after they've joined, right? So the only email you get to send the minute or the day that they've joined is that welcome email. So that goes back to when you're creating it. And notice here's, uh, that's for 2016. So let me quickly create the campaign I'm going to use. 
for 2017. So QBC 2017, this is gonna be automated. I should have done that first. Uh, QBC 2017, select the list, QuickBooks Connect 2017, begin. And here it is. So this is the welcome email, right? And then I'm gonna say design the email. So you'll choose the email subject. You can write preview text. That's what shows up in the headers when it drops into their inbox. You know, who's it from, the email address, and then I'd say next. And you can go back and edit this stuff later. QBC 2017. And then there's templates to choose from in terms of layouts. And it's tempting to want to write these fancy emails with pictures and things that make it look pretty. But I urge you strongly to choose this option, simple text. Keep it really simple. People, if you have all these bells and whistles and distractions, people will miss the message. So I always use the simple text template. I never use anything else, even with my regular emails that go out. <clears throat> and I learned this from watching what the, the top rated marketers on the internet do. Right? And I'm not talking about people in our industry. I'm talking about guys like Chris Brogan who send out emails who have millions of subscribers. This is how they do it. It's always a plain text email you know, with links in there. But no pictures, no images, nothing fancy, nothing to, you know, all the stuff that we do with these templates tends to be to, you know, I think overdo it with trying to, uh, you know, make it look pretty. But then we lose the, the function of it, which is the, the core of, of it is there's things in here that we want them to take action on. We want them to click on things. We want them to go sign up for something. We want them, you know, whatever it is. And this is still the most effective form of marketing, by the way, more so than anything else. I mean, case in point, a, a couple of weeks ago when somebody join my 97 and up program, you know, I always take note if it's somebody whose name I don't recognize because I'm always curious, how did they find me? The people I know, I get it. They know me. So they ask me about it or they just, you know, they see my content. So they, they end up joining or a lot of times they've already talked to me before they join. So I know they're going to join before they do. But this guy, I didn't recognize his name at all. So I took his email address, dropped a search in my email to see if I had ever spoken to him before. And he had signed up for my newsletter exactly a week before. So evidently he signed up, got the newsletter, got the follow-up newsletter a week later that I do, and, and that triggered him to go sign up for 97 and up. Nothing is more effective than emails because people are giving you their permission to talk to them. And that's the most intimate kind of relationship you can have with people where you actually get to talk to them directly. And when I write these emails that go out, especially the follow-ups, I always encourage them to hit reply. I, the, the, there's one basic goal here, which is – you know, summed up in one simple phrase, start a conversation. That's what I'm trying to do with people. I'm trying to start a conversation with them so that after the event, in this case, I can keep the conversation going after the session, answer their questions, find out what their needs are, find out how I can help solve whatever problems they're experiencing. And that's how we make friends. And that's how sometimes we turn friends into clients, you know, and it's both. That's important to me. I don't necessarily need everybody that I talk to ever to give me their money, but you know, I'm hoping to build a network of friends and that's a big part of how I do it. And from among those people, some people will want to go to that next step and hire me to do something for them or to help them with something. Right. And that's where the marketing part of this really comes in. And that's how you can end up getting something like speaking at a conference to pay off a little bit better than what you actually just get paid to do the session without doing any selling in your session. Right. The session itself should be strictly educational, but you do this kind of stuff, give them the giveaways, so that they can, so that you can get the follow-ups, right? Now, real quick, in the bigger picture, I promised you this, so I'm going to give it to you. I use Active Collab to manage everything. That's kind of my home base. Control K, QuickBooks, 2017. Notice here. I have a, a list for my presentations, Second sec, session document, click, I'm in my document in two seconds. So Active Collab, the project that I've created for QuickBooks Connect 2017, this is command central. This is where I have everything I need to know about the project, right? My travel arrangements, again, here's my planning template. I also have it linked here, just so that this is the one place I know I can go to for sure. And this goes back to what Mariette was talking about at the very beginning where she has a document with all the links, I put my links here. Now, Seth, why do you use this as opposed to Evernote? 
Um, because this is, this is more of a project management solution, whereas Evernote's more of a digital notebook. I could totally use Evernote for this if I wanted to. There's no reason I couldn't. But as I've evolved with this stuff, and because I use so many tools, I've gotten more and more specific about Active Cloud is a project management tool. I'm going to use it to manage projects. Evernote's a digital notebook. I'm going to use it for detailed notes and things. Right. Just the same. I could have taken what I've done in Evernote here and put it into Active Collab. But here's the key distinction. Uh, emails render better. I can forward emails to Active Collab, but the formatting renders better in Evernote. Mm -hmm. Right. And if I want to, I can actually take any of these notes. Right. And I can generate a share link and paste that into Active Collab. So even though it maybe looks like I'm separating things and everything's detached, the reality is I can connect it all myself and create my own ecosystem that works for me, right? So if you're somebody who feels overwhelmed because of all these apps, then by all means, do it all in Evernote or do it all in Active Collab. There's no need to have it broken out like this. This is just a reflection of how my mind works. My mind compartmentalizes things. And in my mind, Active Collab is perfect for these things, and Evernote is perfect for these other things. But there's no reason you couldn't absolutely do it all in one or the other. Okay, we have 30 days left. All right, any questions? Everybody's asleep? <laughs> um, oh, I, I just have one. With the, the tweets that you're asking people to tweet, at which point I kind of got lost in your progression of pages. Um, do they have to, is that after they fill in their email address that that, li that landing page has the tweets? Yeah, so the landing page, remember, one thing on the landing page is you give me your email address. Then they get redirected to that page that has all the materials for the session, including the tweets. Okay, but so they're going to do that during your workshop? Yeah, so during the workshop, the idea is I'm going to tell them keep that tab open, right? First of all, it's got the links to the templates that you're going to need for the session and the links to the notes for the session, and then I'll tell them scroll down below that, and that's where you have the tweets. So I, you know, I'll tell them, look, I've saved you the trouble. You can just click on any of these tweets and tweet them out there during the okay. session. That's okay. Right? I've made it easy for you. By the way, one other thing I did since you brought up that page, let me bring that up. I know that my particular target audience at QuickBooks Connect is likely going to be interested in these programs here. So I've included a pricing table at the bottom of that very page so that as they scroll down, eventually they're going to see this. You know, my hope is that somebody in the process might get interested and click buy now, right? So again, I'm not selling in the session, but I've got it. It's sort of a back-ended kind of sale and saying, hey, if you like what you see, then I have programs for you that'll work. All right, any other questions before we go? Make sure you unmute. Great, great, great presentation. I really learned a lot. I don't use WordPress per se, but I, I use Squarespace, but I did like how you um, use the, the you know, smart sheets to count the characters and then you um, put those on the website. So make it using the, the click to tweet, so people just click that and tweet it out um, and be engaged in, in, while you're speaking. So that was really, really genius. Um, Thank you. you do that. Yeah, you're welcome. I, I really, I'm really impressed with that. Thank you very much. So yeah, there's two, I think, keys to all this that I came up with after doing this for a number of years. One was I used to collect business cards and I'd say, if you want the notes, give me your business card. But now I had a lot of work to do. I had to actually take those business cards home and type in all their email addresses and get them into MailChimp manually. So I said, this is stupid because I can just give them the form and collect their emails, you know, and have each individual enter their own email and then automate the whole thing. So that was perfect for me. And then the tweet thing also kind of came along on the heels of that because I said, what else can I automate here? And I know that when I'm sitting in somebody's session, I'm often frantically typing, trying to remember what they said and get it typed up before I forget so I can tweet it out there, you know, because I love doing that kind of stuff. So then I thought this would make it so much easier for people. So thanks, Camille. Barbara, did you want to ask something? Yeah, I have a question. Um, I guess a lot of this is really new to me, all these um, tools that you're <laughs> using. So, like, I even went, like, I'm, like, okay, Google Docs. Like, I've always just done everything on PowerPoint and, mm -hmm. um, and stuff like that. So, I went in, so I'm on my other screen, I'm looking at Google Docs, and it's, like, it doesn't even want to download onto my computer. So... That well, Google Docs won't download. Remember, it just runs in your browser. So it's just a matter of opening up a browser and logging into a Google or Gmail account. Oh, okay. 
that's all Google Docs is. It's nothing to download. But in your notes from today, it'll be up on the site tomorrow. I have links to everything, um, including okay. you know Google. But that's all Google Docs is. And uh, okay, when I went to Google Docs, it said download Google Docs like an app, and it's like it doesn't do that. So no, no, it's Google Docs okay. is just a browser-based suite of Office applications, and it's also ah. where you get Gmail. If you have a Gmail account and you log into Gmail, you're already plugged into that whole world. You may not know okay. it, but you are. <laughs> There you go. I didn't know that. <laughs> Thank you. Perfect. You're welcome. And so as always, if you all need to follow up with me on anything, you have any questions, you know where to reach me. Um, Jackie, sorry, I just saw you at the last minute there as the, one of the attendees, so I brought you in here. Um, uh, but it, you know, get a follow-up email tomorrow also with a link for some information. And like I said, it'll be up on my website um, over at, if I go to the home page, just go into uh, podcasts in my menu navigation. And you'll see Zoom in with Seth David, and that's where you'll find the uh, link and post for today's session up here, probably by this time tomorrow, maybe a little later. Depends Thanks, on when Seth. I wake uh, up in the morning. I do have a quick question for you. Um, if you're, this is my first year presenting, um, this is Jackie at QuickBooks Connect, and I don't really have like a sales pitch because I'm an accounting firm. Mm -hmm. um, if you're first starting to kind of develop like what it is you're selling to other accountants, what would you recommend with that? Um, well, obviously I'm a big fan of video content, right? I mean, that's kind of the core of who I am. So if you have videos that you can create that will serve as training tools for other accounting professionals, that would probably be a good place to start. If not, then just the written content, you know, for example, what's your session about at QuickBooks Connect this year? Tax planning. Perfect. Then write me a short white paper on tax planning, covering the key highlights that you're going to be covering during your session, right? My step one from today, I don't know if you were here at the beginning. Um, yeah, I missed the first few minutes. Sorry about that. No, no worries. So step one is to write it all out anyway, so that you're going to have right at the outset, essentially a white paper on what you're going to be talking about during your session. And what I even mentioned in today's notes, I didn't mention it live today, is that you're only giving this stuff away to the people who attend your session. Anybody else who wants it can maybe come and pay a few bucks on your website to get it. Right? Mm -hmm. So it's going to be free to those who attended. They're going to get the emails. After that, I'm going to lock those pages up and then probably create a, a product in my shopping cart. Very easy to do, by the way, if you have WordPress using WooCommerce, which is what I use. And you can take that white paper and create a PDF out of it and charge five or seven bucks or whatever it is just to get people into your world and acquainted with your training materials. And it's worth probably five or seven bucks to them to pay to get that kind of information, especially tax planning. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Thanks. Yep. But the, the, and the core answer the, in the bigger picture and more generically is just create content because that's what you can sell to other accountants and bookkeepers is content that's really valuable that helps them do a better job at whatever it is they're trying to do. Right? Mm -hmm. That's what I learned by accident. I started making videos to help with my clients and their bookkeepers. And lo and behold, I have accountants and bookkeepers coming to me and saying, hey, I love your content. I'm learning a lot from it. And at first it caught me off guard because I'm like, wait, you're an accountant or bookkeeper. You should know this already. And then I'm like, wait, no, there's different levels of expertise and experience. And all of a sudden I learned, oh, I can actually help other accountants and bookkeepers. Look at that. Right. And so I, you know, I just so I identify who the target audience is and create the content that's going to serve their needs. Give a lot of it away for free and sell a certain amount of it for a fee. And between the two, I create a nice community of people who love what I do because I do it honestly and I do it selflessly. And that's the name of the game at the end. Like I mentioned at the beginning, the difference between confidence and arrogance is confidence comes from humility. Arrogance lacks it, right? So coming from that place, my whole goal at the core of all of this is to be of service to others. That's the name of the awesome. game. Awesome, that's great. All right. Thank you all. The recording will be up tomorrow and you know where to find me if you have any more questions. I'll see you all around the web. All right. Bye. Thank you. Bye.